Healthcare systems around the world are under stress. More and more patients are seeking treatment, pushing hospitals to the brink of collapse. But if you look closely, there are differences. In the US, healthcare is largely privatized. In an effort to cut costs, many hospitals have reduced staff and stretched resources that are now urgently needed. Many clinics are overwhelmed. The same goes for countries like Italy and Spain, which were burdened with severe austerity measures after the last financial crisis. State-run healthcare systems, on the other hand, are proving to be more robust to deal with the crisis, some experts say. In many countries, this has sparked a discussion about whether healthcare should be a public good run by the state or a business model. Now, let's agree, money can't buy you everything but it can give you a better chance of survival. If you can afford a private health insurance, chances are you get to see your doctor sooner than someone on national health. It's not fair, but it is what it is. But how does it work in a crisis like the coronavirus pandemic? In a moment, we'll talk to the CEO of Germany's biggest private hospital operator. But first, this report. The patients just keep on coming. The coronavirus outbreak is testing the limits of hospitals all over the world. The demand for beds, respiratory equipment, protective gear and workers continues to surge. Many former medical professionals have been called back on duty, like qualified doctor, the Irish Prime Minister. As you know, I rejoined the medical register there last month and uh, I'm setting aside uh, really one session a week, about half a day a week. Uh, so far, it's just been uh, a telephone clinic. The virus, which has infected politicians, celebrities and business leaders, is often described as indiscriminate. But as hospital staff get to work, inequality reigns. Poorer people are more likely to catch the disease and they're more likely to die from it. That's led to calls for a lifting of the barriers, for example, between public and private hospitals. In Spain, one of the countries worst hit by the crisis, the government has ordered private clinics to share resources with the public system. Australia has pushed through similar measures. In Germany, meanwhile, some private clinics have reportedly applied for government support to compensate for the cancellation of lucrative procedures. But they simply aren't a priority right now. For more, I'm joined now by the CEO of Fresenius, a global healthcare group with more than 290,000 employees in more than 100 countries. And here in Germany, Fresenius is also the largest hospital operator. Welcome, Stefan Sturm. Good to have you with us. Tell me, how are your Thanks hospitals holding up in this health crisis? We've got to differentiate between uh, the situation in Germany and in Spain. We have 86 hospitals uh, in Germany where we're still waiting uh, for a large wave of corona patients to arrive. Uh, on the other hand, we have 44 hospitals across Spain, where in particular in the hotspots in Madrid and Barcelona, uh, we have had more than our fair share of patients to deal with. Right. How, how big a role, I mean, it, it feels awful to talk about money in such a situation, but how big a role does money play when it comes to providing good health care? Uh, well, we have uh, got to see that the fatality rate uh, in Germany is substantially lower than the one uh, that we're seeing elsewhere. But I do believe that uh, first and foremost, that has to do uh, with quite a few issues that happen outside a hospital. Um, so when it comes to the amount of testing that we're doing, the denominator in that fatality ratio, um, Germany has done substantially more, as far as I can see, uh, than most other countries. Uh, but also when we look at the numerator, uh, I believe that in Germany, the patient population on average is substantially younger than elsewhere. A key reason for this uh, may actually be a cultural difference where I think it is more uh, to, towards the German culture to keep some natural social distance uh, relative to what we can observe in Italy and in Spain. Oh. Uh, and it comes to the money, the capital allocation to a hospital system, then I do believe um, that uh, Germany is a bit better equipped than what we're seeing elsewhere. 
And as far as our own hospitals are concerned, we have invested quite heavily in the past. And we can now also afford to shift resources within this large network to right. wherever they are needed. Right. As, as you just mentioned about shifting resources, you are you do run private hospitals and private hospitals that's in their nature. They need to be profitable. Is that a problem now, given that treating COVID-19 patients is very time and very cost consuming? Uh, no, and uh, this is not the time to think about market share gains or profitability. This is the time uh, to think about how we can best help um, the society. And as uh, it was mentioned a bit earlier on, yes, the Spanish government has drawn uh, on resources to help out, and we are more than happy uh, to do that. Um, I believe that, yes, um, whilst we're still waiting in Germany for uh, actually, we're not waiting, but um, you know, we haven't seen a large wave of uh, corona patients uh, yet. And therefore, in many of our hospitals where we have followed the minister's appeal uh, to delay any elective surgery, um, yes, we're seeing an underutilization of capacity, uh, but that is obviously absolutely fine. We got to see through uh, this crisis now and uh, everything else is going to be taken care of afterwards. Uh, that is definitely a, an almost luxury position to be in, the one that you describe here in German hospitals. Uh, and so you mentioned it that so far Germany's health system managed to keep the number of COVID-19 related deaths fairly low, certainly in comparison to other countries. But the number of cases keeps rising. Uh, now, as the CEO of Germany's biggest hospital operator, how worried are you that maybe you will not be able to cope with the influx of patients and, and have to make hard decisions? This has been a very, very dynamic development that, frankly, has beaten also my expectation. So I will be uh, cautious with making definitive statements. But at the same time, um, Germany has had the luxury of being somewhat late to this. And therefore, we have had the opportunity uh, to learn quite a bit from what worked uh, in other countries. As an aside, we have also had quite a number of volunteers in our German hospital system uh, to go down to Spain and help out our colleagues over there. And uh, those who are returning now uh, have real life experience uh, as to how we can better deal, combat this crisis um, when it arrives, truly arrives here in Germany. Right, Stefan Sturm, CEO Fresenius, thank you so much for your time and uh, all the best uh, to you and certainly for your medical staff in the coming days and weeks. Thank you. Stay healthy. And now let's get some more answers to your questions. Remember that you can keep them coming in on YouTube, on Facebook and Twitter or via email. Now, DW Science journalist Derek Williams stands ready to provide some answers. Was Germany better prepared for the pandemic than other countries? Throughout this pandemic, uh, the number of fatalities in Germany has remained remarkably lower than that in other countries. Only between 1 and 2 percent of the people who tested positive for COVID-19 here have so far died from the disease. That's a lower case fatality rate than almost any other country. To answer the question, Germany appears to have been better prepared than many other countries in one key way. The number of acute care beds here is very high. There are more than twice as many of them per capita as there are in European neighbors like France or Italy. I don't think any country was really well prepared for COVID-19, but Germany's reaction to it looks to have made a significant difference in, in how many people it will probably kill here. What's the situation in Germany like right now? As of this morning, over 103,000 infections had been confirmed in Germany and over 1,800 people had died from the virus. In addition to the high number of acute care beds, other factors that have so far contributed to keeping the case fatality rate so low here, experts think, are that testing began very early and was widespread and that anyone who was infected was isolated quickly. Um, you can see that in another key statistic. 
The average age of those who have tested positive for COVID-19 in Germany is under 50. That's low, and it's down to the fact that a much wider range of the populace is being tested than in many other countries where the disease is often confirmed only when an elderly patient is taken to the hospital with critical symptoms. It also appears that nearly everyone here has been adhering to government-mandated social distancing guidelines. All of that has contributed to a situation where the number of new infections is no longer growing exponentially in Germany, at least for now. Uh, so it looks like the curve is beginning to flatten, but we aren't plateauing yet. So of course, the number of deaths from the disease will continue to rise. Germany's Central Health Authority has said that all in all, the situation remains both serious and dynamic. The US and the UK were supposedly well prepared for this kind of emergency, but they're seeing a lot of infections and fatalities. Why? That's a tough question because so many factors appear to be contributing to how effective countries are in grappling with this disease. Don't forget the situation is unprecedented and we're still in the middle of the pandemic. It's, we're way too close to fast changing events to be able to really say country A got this right and country B got that wrong. Um, that said, one thing in particular has seemed to play a pivotal role in slowing the spread of the disease in some countries, and that's early widespread testing. As we've heard over and over again, you can't fight what you can't see, right? So both the US and UK got off to quite slow starts when it came to testing because healthcare systems there rely on tests from a single government source, and those government sources didn't respond very rapidly. So despite getting top marks for their healthcare systems in reports like the Global Health Security Index, a structural aspect of how the US and UK were set up to deal with a possible pandemic might now be making a big difference in overall numbers. Now we would like to leave you with a story that shows we really are all in this together. At a hospital in Taiwan, people wait in line to make donations to help Italy in its fight against the coronavirus. They so far donated more than three million US dollars to the relief effort. It's a way of showing their gratitude to Italian priests who helped build hospitals in Taiwan after the Second World War. The funds will be used to purchase much needed medical supplies for COVID-19 stricken areas in Italy.